The next easiest way to use sighting and measuring in a drawing like this is with what they call plumb lines. If you remember, we talked about these a bit when we were still in class. Plumb line is just a vertical line that goes all the way through the figure. You know, we used to actually attach a weight to a string and then hold it until it stops swinging because that weight pulling down the string means that that line is perfectly straight up and down. Um, and some people still do this. I think we all have a pretty good idea of what vertical is when we hold something out, and so that's just what I go with. Um, but what I do want to do is drop some vertical lines all the way through the drawing and just see what lands on that line, what has to be to the left of it, what has to be to the right of it. That's where these come in as value. So we were talking earlier about how we know that this heel is probably in the wrong place because the spacing here is off, that this leg needs to become straighter. One of the ways I can make sure of that is if this plumb line that goes straight through right now, the heel doesn't come into contact with the head at all. You see that it ends up out here somewhere. If I hold a vertical line next to the heel on my source, it should be hitting closer to the center of his nose. So if I come straight down from his nose, look at that. Makes me want to push the heel over this far. And what's beautiful about that is I'm not just drawing this foot in space and hoping it looks right with whatever is down here. I'm making the connection that this exists in space in relationship to something as far away as possible being where the nose is. The more of those kinds of comparisons I can make, again, it ties the whole figure together. So I really like how that foot's drawn. It's kind of pretty in a block in fashion, but it's wrong. So luckily I was fairly light with it when it went in. At this point in our drawings, we have to be willing to make changes. There's just no way around that. Now as I move this foot, it's only moving left and right, but I'm still hitting that bottom mark that I originally set up. So I'm staying true to my desire to control the drawing as I go. All right, what else hits that plumb line? Okay, pretty much right into the center of his nose. The edge of the shadow on him wants to come really close to that too. Now, it's getting awful close to his belly button. So I look at that shadow form, but that plumb line is true, so I have to believe that that is where that wants to exist. By the way, Hopefully you notice I just mentioned a shadow. Everything on here is a shape. And so while I'm sighting and measuring things, doing my straight line construction, those are just shapes too. The shadow shapes, the highlight shapes, all of it. So there's no reason not to be drawing those as well. All right, what else? Anything else want to really align with that? Oh, okay, that helps. So now I'm noticing that if his heel is right here, running up that this part of his leg has to be to the left of it. Remember, it's not just what lines up with that plumb line, but it shows me things that are to the immediate left or right of it and helps me push them around as well. And I, I needed more 
length here anyway, I'm fairly sure. Anything else significant want to line up with that? Mine goes just to the right of his belly button, which is good. Sternum actually wants to be over here a bit more because it lines up with that as well and then extends up and really hits kind of the tip of his nose in there. I'm trying to notice as I'm doing these um, these lines, what I'm talking about are landmarks. I'm not identifying, you know, anything along here. There's no landmark inside his leg that's helping me right now. But this is a landmark where his leg is disappearing into the shadow. It comes to a point I can zero in on that. The belly button's a landmark. The corner of the shadow is a landmark. The dip here at the top of the sternum is a landmark. His chin, his nose, even the corner of his hair. All of that would be pretty good landmarks to look at and compare to what's happening here. Okay, some other ones I would do. Um, I could look at from his ear straight down and see what that runs into. Now, it's not going to help me out much down here, but maybe somewhere up in the torso. I line that up. Could run into his belly button. So look at this. If I push this line straight vertical, it's cutting off his head. It's making me want to push things over a wee bit further. It could be that his head needs to be tilted a little bit more. Didn't really run into too much else that was of any great use to me, but at least it did help me realize that his, the corner of his jaw and then his ear needed to be pushed a little bit. And I may find that I need to push further this direction on this side. Let's find out. Not too bad over there. Not too bad. Other things I might use that straight line with is I might try to see this straight line, this plumb line that goes right along the edge of the chair. How much of the foot does it cut off? Does it line up with the bottom corner of the chair? That kind of thing. And actually, Should hit the center of this as it does, but the foot, basically the, the brownness of the ball of the foot before the big toe wants to be out here a little bit further. So I'm going to push that out. One thing that sighting and measuring does is it in a lot of ways, it tells you the truth. Whether you want to hear it or not, it doesn't really matter. Um, makes me want to push a little bit out here because of this. And also a little bit on how far the chair itself sticks out. What I want to do through this whole process is realize that the whole drawing is in flux. What does that mean? It means any piece of this 
could need to be moved, adjusted, raised higher, pushed lower, made wider, shorter, anything. At this stage, I can't say that any one piece of this is true yet. I want to keep working on those big changes here in the beginning, letting big things happen early, and then the more and more I work on it, those changes become smaller and smaller. It's described to me once as it's kind of oscillating out here in these big waves. And the more and more we work on it, the tighter those oscillations, vibrations get until it finally locks into place. I think it's a fairly good way to think about how all that works. All right. Um, yeah, I might look at kind of his, where his pec meets his arm and his armpit here and drop a vertical down and see how close it needs to come to this kind of interchange in the leg. I might try to see just vertically, does the thumb where it touches the leg, does that hit that in that way? Yeah, it goes right down the center of that. So that's a pretty good alignment there. All of that happens past there. Good. And so anywhere that I can look at a landmark and drop a vertical through all the way through the figure and see what else needs to be in perfect Vertical alignment with that uh, is going to help me quite a bit. Verticals are a lot easier than angles because translating the angles isn't quite as easy as really knowing that this is vertical, which we want. Um, that might, might change that. Sorry, I'm... I'm thinking my way through the drawing, and I realize, uh, or I, I guess I forget sometimes that I'm still videotaping what I'm doing. So that's my brain talking to itself, which hopefully yours is doing too. That's, we kind of want that to happen during the drawing. It's a, the whole thing is a exercise in problem solving, and that's, that's what we're doing is just trying to put the puzzle together.